Blasphemous is a game I want to love. It's this atmospheric, surreal experience where every item contains a grim fable, and every twisted enemy adds to the nightmarish tableau of the world. But when it comes to actually moving around the land of Custodia, the game stumbles. This has major ramifications on the entire experience, hurting everything from exploration to combat. There are a number of elements to examine, but the foremost is your basic movement. The penitent one has a dash, a jump, the ability to hang off ledges, a wall climb, a wall stab, and an ability called air impulse, which allows your character to stay in the air for a second if you hit down while hitting an enemy. These are the only abilities you'll need to see the credits, and it's here where the game runs into its first major hurdle. You don't actually need any of the transformative movement abilities that are so synonymous with the Metroidvania genre. They're entirely supplemental, giving you access to hidden areas, shortcuts, and a variety of collectibles. My grievance with this decision is not that it bucks genre convention, it's that you're stuck with the penitent one's plotting movement for the duration of the game. Movement upgrades in metroidvanias are sometimes compared to keys, as in a double jump will allow you to get into higher areas, or a dash might let you get past a previously impenetrable barrier. But these abilities are more than just one-use features. They can have a profound effect on your trips throughout the world. Take the Shade Cloak in Hollow Knight, which is most prominently used to get past these ominous barriers of energy. Importantly, it also gives you the ability to dash through other hazards and enemy attacks. This adds a new wrinkle to combat, as you can now more confidently weave through boss fights and other dangers. And, as you further explore the world, you can experiment with and master your new abilities, giving you a new perspective on your journeys throughout Hallow Nest. Or take the grapple hook in Environmental Station Alpha, which you can acclimate to as you navigate the world. Just hunting for upgrades will give you a chance to mess around and learn about the unique properties of the new gadget. Again. Movement options aren't just keys on a keyring. They can be profoundly transformative for the game. Blasphemous lacking these features means there's not much to expedite the process of moving around. Your movement at the end of the game will look much the same as it did in the beginning, and with an ever-expanding map, can make exploration a tedious affair. That said, there are movement upgrades of a sort. You can find relics, which are some of the most hidden items in the game, that will grant you passage to new areas. These hew much closer to the lock and key design, though. For example, the blood perpetuated in sand will turn these red particles into platforms you can jump on, and are found scattered throughout the world. The other upgrades are much the same, triggering parts of the environment or allowing you to pass into areas unhindered. This second point can be especially jarring. Some features that you would take as a given seem to have been gimped so as to lock off progress to certain areas. You can't fall down pits, which is especially odd in a metroidvania, where your curiosity pushes you to explore every inch of the map. Take this elevator shaft where you see a door and some items around the screen after riding up. The obvious solution would be to jump back down the way you came, but you're killed if you do so. The actual solution is to free enough of the cherubs and talk to a quest giver, who will give you an item that will grant you the privilege of jumping down pits. It's hard to shake the feeling that some of your fundamental options have been taken away, just so you can find an item that will grant you the feeling of added mobility. In short, the highly contextual nature of relics does little to alleviate the tedium of moving around. Fast travel stations are also in short supply. There are five in the game, three in the first section of the map and two in the second section. Teleporting around is kind of an inglorious way of cutting down on travel time, but it can complement backtracking, especially in moments where you get a new ability and realize the place to use it is all the way on the other side of the map. By having such a small number of fast travel points and such sedate movement, you find yourself in moments where you could go and explore, but that doing so would be too time-consuming to be worthwhile. Shortcuts have also been included, and it's certainly a more natural way of linking areas together. Unlocking an elevator to a prior area, or opening a door directly to a new location is both rewarding and encourages some exploration, but there are some routes that are so circuitous and dangerous that it's often easier to take a well-trodden path. One of the faster ways of moving around is actually to save at a shrine, go to a destination, then quit and reload your game. You retain all the progress you made and only have to make a one-way trip. It's an exploit that illustrates how inadequate the in-game teleporters actually are. But maybe I'm looking at this all wrong, like it's not a metroidvania but drawing from a different design philosophy, such as the Castlevanias of old and other classic platformers. The slow movement speed would then be meant to make the players really consider their actions and tackle each obstacle in their way with a deliberate mindset. 
While this perspective would explain some of the decisions regarding progression around the map, it's also one with a number of issues. There's a feeling of imprecision that permeates the more demanding platforming sections. This manifests in a number of ways, but at its core, the jumping doesn't feel reliable. I think it's mostly a matter of height, as your character gains just enough air to clear some of the most basic jumps. It makes moments where you have to do stretches of platforming into these nerve-wracking affairs, as you question whether or not you can make it to the next platform. Even jumping over a small pit of spikes can become stressful. Wall climbing is similarly problematic, and the culprit is the deceptively small hitbox of your sword swing. You might think that the smear of your slash will connect with the wall, but in actuality, you have to hit it with this small space in between. There's a section in which you have to combine wall jumping and platforming while using the wind to assist in your jumps, and I always felt like I was just barely able to make contact with the walls. Not a hard section, but one where the foibles of your movement are on full display. There's also some general weirdness with platforming, like how your character automatically clings to some ledges. Figuring out what you can and can't interact with, and the correct position to be in, adds a layer of guesswork to the proceedings. And there are some instances where a lack of polish displays itself, such as here, where I guess I'm saved by divine intervention. The sum total of this is platforming sections that alternate between being dull and frustrating, and a character whose movement never feels reliable. For as rigid as the movement was in the old Castlevania titles, the members of the Belmont clan were always consistent in their movements, with levels that had been tailored around their particular limitations. Even single screens housed a great variety of challenges, layering obstacles upon obstacles, until you had challenges like this that demand the player's full attention. Even in its more punishing sections, Blasphemous never has the same rhythm or constant pace. The game feels caught between these two design ideologies, a metroidvania that makes exploration a fight against the game, and a classic mania that lacks the polish or escalating difficulty to properly engage with players. Despite the flaws, I do think the developers at the Game Kitchen can overcome these issues. They've shown a willingness to support the game, and with the promise of DLC down the line, I believe that they can refine the hurdles to movement. A slightly more powerful jump and wider hitbox for wall climbing would make platforming more enjoyable, and making some abilities not relic dependent would make exploration more rewarding. It speaks volumes that, even when I was trudging through old areas, I was still compelled to play just to see what new macabre visions I'd witness. With some refinement, I know that the game can ascend to its proper place in the pantheon of gaming.